Well, months and months of practice, rehearsals, and competitions, teachers and families pulling together to provide their never-ending support, all are on display tonight as our Finneytown Wildcat musicians take the stage for the annual Winter Band Concert here in the Performing Arts Center at Finneytown Secondary Campus. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Muchmore, and I'm joined by Mike Kennedy for our very first live stream of a concert event. Mike, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. It's a little bit different for me on this live cast. Usually I'm on stage as a former band director, but I get to be behind the scenes this time and hear a really amazing concert from the kids. And I, I got to tell you, I'm really excited. I am too. And it's exciting to get to see our fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students perform tonight in addition to our high school symphonic band as they take the stage here for this holiday concert. Mike, this is concert band, not marching band. I know we all talk about marching band quite a bit. But what's the difference between concert band and marching band? Well, the obvious difference is marching band, you move around the field, right? Concert band, you're sitting down. But there is some big differences that I think is really interesting from someone who may not be in the world of band. And that is the concert band can play a lot more difficult music than you can play on the marching band field. In general, the marching band field, we take the music level down a little bit because you're running around on the field and then you're spread apart sometimes, and you've got a color guard, and you've got percussion, and you've got all these other things that are happening. But concert band is more intimate, right? You're sitting down next to your neighbor, and that's where you really work on your dexterity and, and your muscle memory to play all these notes. And the thing that we kind of forget is that marching band is about five months of the year, right? Mm -hmm. But concert band is about the other seven months of the year. And you really fine tune your skills during that concert band season to make your marching band season amazing. And these guys have done a great job of that year after year. And I know this is the second year of Sam Franck and Brad Delaney together. But yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. And one other obvious thing is it's a lot warmer inside than it is right now. And you don't have to deal with the wind and the rain and the heat because people forget right, when right. you start marching band, it's cooking hot. Oh, yeah. During the summer practices, I see them out there sweating and working hard. And like you said, no wind, no heat, no rain, uh, none of those external elements. But um, our musicians are performing in front of a live crowd. How do you think the kids are feeling right about now? Well, to be honest with you, like, as you can see on the screen, they're, they're backstage, right? And, and they're a little bit nervous, but behind the scenes, I think there's a lot of things going on. And one of those things is preparation, right? They've been preparing for a couple months. But as they're getting ready for this, there's a lot of things that go into it during the class and before the class. And as you can see right now, they see, per, seem pretty chill. But I, I guarantee you some of them are kind of nervous. And that nervous energy is a good energy. Um, and they put all that into their performance. And these kids really have something special. There's a lot of musicianship in Finneytown, and they have something special. So there's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes. Um, but they're excited, I think, to get on stage and get this concert underway. And a lot of that success and musicianship is attributed to the band directors we have here, Brad Delaney and Sam Franck, as you mentioned, in their second year. Uh, they work incredibly well together, work very hard to prepare our students for these performances here in the auditorium and also on the field when they're performing for marching band. They have to be feeling something too right now, Mike, don't they? You know, they are feeling a lot of things right now. Some of it is stress, right, being a teacher, organizing. But the other part of it too is the fact that They've worked a long time, and they want to have this performance just as much as the kids do. And I think they'll feel relieved when they step on the stage. I know I did as a band director. When I finally hit the stage and got to make some music with the kids instead of just rehearsing the same thing over and over again, there's something special about that. And I know they feel that, and I know for them they feel a sense of relief, like, oh, we finally made it here. And the coolest thing for a band director is hearing the kids get the affirmation of applause and smiles and cheering from the audience. And as a band director, you can't help but feel that sense of pride for your kids that you put a lot of time into. It. And I know that Brad and Sam put a lot of time and effort into these kids. They have a special bond, special relationship with the community and those kids. And that shows up on stage. And I know that they're excited to have this performance. So for them, I think they're feeling that excitement like the kids. And it feels exciting in here right now as we look down at the, uh, at the seats. They're filling up with the crowd. And so that energy that the students feel from the audience is certainly starting to, to pack the house here. Yeah, you know, this is a really well-attended event, as all of them are. Um, it's hard to find a parking spot, so if you're still coming and you're watching on your way here, <laughs> hustle up, because it's hard to get a parking spot. But that's a good thing. I mean, the parents really come out to support this event. 
And who wouldn't want to see their cute little fifth grader on stage for the first time? That's a really rewarding experience to have. And so these are well attended. We have a lot of support for these kids in the, in the band program, and it shows. And as you can see out in the crowd, we're starting to get a lot of people funneling in, and you hear the conversations. And it's a small community. We're 4.2 square miles, right? And there's a lot of conversations they're catching up on right now as they're getting ready to see their kids. So it really is a community event. Okay, so let's talk music, Mike. A lot of things, uh, songs being performed tonight, some for the first time by some of our um, grade levels. What song do you see challenging the students the most tonight? Well, that's a tough question. Well, honestly, all of them have some challenges. I mean, fifth graders, it's just challenging to get up there and play for your first time, right? Absolutely. And you're used to practicing in a, in a small band room where now you're on a large stage. So that, that's a challenge. So every, every group has their challenges, fifth grade through high school. But I think the real story right now is that our award-winning marching band performed at BOA at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis a couple weeks ago and received fifth place. Yeah, that's right, fifth place in Class A of all the bands in America. That's a great honor. But with that honor comes a different challenge. They had to come back to school and within two and a half weeks prepare for this concert, which is kind of crazy to think about. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of pressure. It's but a quick th turnaround. It's a quick turnaround, but they're going to rise to the occasion. I know they will. And the song that they have on their program that I saw that I'm really excited about, and I know the community will be excited about, is Sleigh Ride, right? Everybody talks about Sleigh Ride. Are you playing Sleigh Ride? Are you sure you're going to play it? We really want to hear it. Everybody's excited about it. But that is a hard piece of music to put on the stage in two and a half weeks. And I know that they worked hard. Mm -hmm. In fact, they stayed a little bit late after their X period bell today just to get a little th couple things worked out before they went to first bell. So I know they're going to be able to do it and rise to the challenge. But I think the high school is the story right here as far as the most difficult piece to p perform is that sleigh ride. But we all love it, so we want to hear it. And there's a reason it's the end of the program. It is the finale and the song that everyone looks forward to. And it's no surprise, no secret here in Finneytown, that our band is incredibly successful, has been successful for a long time. To what do you attribute that success, Mike, as a former band director? I think it's a combination of things, but it starts with the administrative team and the Board of Education they really set the foundation of funding, support, and just overall direction of the district. And then I think the parents are partners in that. And that's a big part is that partnership. The partnership is something that is special and unique to us where the parents from FMPA really work well with our Board of Education and they work well with the teachers and the staff and the students. And that whole team effort is a coordinated effort. And that coordination of being on the same page, I think really proves a lot of consistency. The other thing that we have that's special with that support is we have two band directors in a very small district. And that's unique because we always don't get that luxury and I think the support there is a, is a really big help into how these kids grow is two band directors working together. And we have two good ones in Brad, Brad Delaney and Sam Frank. And our fifth graders, they're gonna be the ones leading off tonight, youngest, youngest performers of the evening. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect from the fifth graders tonight, Mike. Well, I think the fifth graders right now are probably like we see backstage here. They don't really know what to expect yet, right? They've heard the stories from the band directors. Some of them have other people that have been in band before and they are starting to tell them stories, but really they don't know what to expect yet, but they are really excited to get out there and perform. And that performance is coming up here in just a few short minutes. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we'll hear from uh, Sam Frank as he introduces the fifth grade students. And we'll hear our first song of the night. We'll be right back. Big Town's important to me because of the people. The teachers and the students always being here for me as a community and as a family. That's why I chose Big Town. Big Town's important to me because I've met great people. It's a beautiful campus. And I love playing soccer with my friends. And it created like a brotherhood. Um, and I have respect for everybody here. It's a great campus. And that is why I chose Big Town. Big Town is important to me because of the diverse community around the school. And that's why I chose Big Town. 
Fanny Town can do anything. Yes. Like, That's right. Like, Facts. If, I love even that. if it's hard, it, it's still, it's, it's not impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. Well, welcome back, everyone. Right now, our fifth grade students are taking the stage. stick out to you. And so the thing for me is, no matter how they play, no matter how they sound, they're going to have this memory of staying on stage with their friends, playing music. Good evening, everyone. And Here's our director. This evening's band concert. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. This group of students that you see up here on the stage right now is our fifth grade band. Let's give a huge round of applause, applause for these guys. They're a little nervous, but they're going to do a great job for you all this evening. Um, so the way that we do things for fifth grade, um, when they're learning to play an instrument, it, they're, they're basically learning to read and speak a new language all at the same time. So they're learning how to read the music and what all of the signs and the symbols mean. We're taking this weird object and putting it in their hands and telling them how to hold it. And they have to think about what their tongue is doing probably for the first time in their life and make weird faces with their mouth. and. Um, so there's a lot that goes into creating our first song. So what we're going to do for you this evening is kind of show you how that process started. From learning our notes to learning how to move our tongue and move our hands on the percussion. And then finally we're going to play Rolling Along for you at the end. Okay? So we hope that you enjoy. I'm going to step aside. Mr. Franck is going to conduct these guys. Let's have another uh, round of applause for these guys before we get started.
Hold up, there it is, awesome. Welcome everyone to our band concert. Um, as Mr. Delaney said before, my name is Sam Fromp and this is our fifth graders. They have worked so hard this year. Beginning an instrument is not an easy feat and they've pushed through every day, taking their instrument home to practice and we're so proud of them and we're gonna play one more song for you all. So let's give it up one more time for the fifth grade band. Number 14, are you all seeing that Number 14? Well, that was our fifth grade performers. Did an excellent job out there, seemed to handle the pressure, and uh, really gave us a neat performance. Mike, what were your thoughts? You know what? Their sound is impressive for just a, think about it, just a couple months of playing their instrument, and they were able to play that many songs for us tonight. Wow. I mean, amazing. So the sound they're producing, the first five notes, their coordination with each other, they had a couple of little entrances that are early. That's normal for little fifth graders, right? But they played so well together. And I got to tell you, the crowd's reaction to that says it all. I mean, they're proud of their kids. Uh, you can see some of the kids waving as they go off. I mean, they're just, they're just really proud. But, yeah, amazing performance for fifth grade and sound a little bit like a sixth grade band to me. So these guys are going to be special when they get older. <laughs> it's exciting to hear. I don't have a fifth grader yet. I have two little ones, but I can't imagine how – how good that must feel for our parents of these kids um, who come out here and give their best effort in front of a live audience. That's pretty special. A live audience. That's the thing. When you practice in the band room, that's one thing. But when you get in front of a crowd, I mean, that's a lot of pressure. But, man, they did well tonight. They did. And so now we're about to hear from our sixth graders. They're going to play, I believe, two songs for us. And you talked about this a little bit earlier, Mike, when you mentioned that, oh, they sound like a sixth grade band. Um, what do you expect to be a little bit different here as we do hear our sixth graders? Well, the music's going to be a little bit more difficult, right, as we see them come on stage right now. Um, they can handle more than five notes now. Okay. So they're going to be able to play more music that has a lot more notes than just five. They'll probably play eight to nine different notes that they can play now. And some sections could play ten. But they're just able to play more music, more difficult music, because the amount of notes they can play. So I expect them to come out and for them to sound a little bit different. Obviously, they don't have professional sounds yet. They are still learning to use their air. They are still learning to use their tongue. They're working on their embouchure, the, the face that they make when they play the instrument. So there is those things. Uh, but they will be sounding a little bit more mature, right? Because they've had more time. And that makes sense. And as we see them down there, they're smiling. I think they're noticing us up here. Yeah. Which might create a little excitement for them, too, <laughs> with the lights. Um, but they look great. And as they settle in here, I can't help but think uh, how proud of themselves they must be when they're, when they're finished, when they walk off stage. That has to be a great feeling. Yeah, I think it's, it's a group effort, right? There's an individual pride you have as a band member, but there's a group pride, that amount of team that comes together. I mean, anybody that's played sports, anybody that's been on any kind of team, uh, whether you're on a team on your job, you feel a sense of accomplishment when you come together. So let's listen out right now for Brad Delaney as he returns to the stage.
right, thank you. This is our sixth grade band. Uh, we see these students two to three times a week over at the elementary school. Um, we have a lovely new space over there with lots of room and storage lockers and it doesn't flood. So thank you all for your support in, uh, in helping that happen. Um, and so these students have been working um, really hard all year. Quite a few of them are new to band this year. Um, I won't make them stand up or single them out, but there's seven or eight students who just started this year and they're already uh, out here playing with us on the concert. So that is a huge uh, accomplishment for them. So let's give those students a round of applause. So our next piece that we're gonna play for you this evening is Jingle Bells, but before we do, I wanna thank the elementary administration, uh, Meredith Baker and Jessica Martin and Chad Jurgen. Uh, they have been great to us. Uh, we have a fantastic schedule over there this year that allows us to work with the students uh, as regularly as we can uh, at the elementary school, and we're really thankful for that. Um, so make sure you tell them thank you for supporting music at the elementary school. Jingle bells. I mean, a classic. A classic. And, and a, what about that trombone player? I mean, there's one trombone player, and he is rocking it up there. I mean, unbelievable. The sound that's coming from this group, how clear it is, how balanced the, and blended it is, is spectacular. I mean, really, it is. And you can hear that they're a little bit clearer on their notes, right, than the fifth grade. It's a little bit more obvious. Of course, they've had a longer time. But that is the difference. You see the difference there. And they did a great job, as did our fifth graders performing. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back as we head into our seventh grade performance. Denny's has a friend to me because when I first moved here, I didn't feel accepted. I like felt like an outcast everywhere else in Ohio. But as soon as I moved to Finneytown, it was such a better environment and it was more kid friendly and I was able to express myself more and be able to 
fit in. Well, hello, and Finny Town. That's why I choose How are you tonight? Finny Town's important to me because it'll always Good. be my home. It's where I grew up, I am and it's where all of my friends live, and it's where I've built some of the most meaningful connections in my entire life. It's my home. That's why I choose Finny Town. announcements to just Finny Town is important to me because it's helped me become a better person, a better musician, and I matured over the years. And then also, just to let you know what we got going on tonight. Finny Town can do anything. Yes, that's right. Like, if, I love that. Even if it's Aren't hard, you? Do you know what WB it, is? it's still, it's, it's no. not impossible. The word it's itself called said, break. I'm possible. Hello? So on the count of three, I need everybody, adults will not be excited, but I need everybody to get excited about winter break. So on the count of three, we're going to scream winter break really, really loud. You ready? One, two, three. Three. Winter break! Yes, we are so super excited about winter break. It is happening now, okay? So we need for you guys to get excited about all the things that we're going to be doing for 2023. Back in the back when you first came in, there are some beautiful ladies out there that have wonderful flowers. The flowers are for all the beautiful performers and the handsome performers that are up here tonight. The money that you pay for those beautiful flowers will go towards the FMPA, our PTA, and all the cool things that we do with the children. We also wanted to let you know that um, we had a wonderful cookie dough um, fundraiser. How many people ate cookie dough? Raise your hand. I see y'all. I see y'all. All right. How many people have eaten the uh, butter braids before? Those were pretty cool, huh? So we got some different fundraisers coming up for 2023. So if you don't like the butter braids and you don't like the cookie dough, we still have something for you. We also have, um, have had before dinner with the show. So how many people had dinner before the show? How many people have participated in dinner before the show? Okay, pretty good amount there. Well, we got something cool for you guys for 2023. It's going to be breakfast before the show. So buy um, a little bit of scream. How many people like pancakes? Scream pancakes. Okay. How many people like waffles? Swing waffle. Oh. Okay. How about a cinnamon roll? Okay. Okay. So I can't tell you what's on the menu. Sorry. Um, but it might be one of those three things. Okay. So mark your calendars for March the 12th. Everybody say March the 12th. That is a Sunday. We're going to be having, yes, baby. Um, we're going to be having breakfast before the show. So March the 12th, breakfast before the show. We need to see you there. Um, also just wanted to let you know with the FMPA, you can give a donation as little as a dollar or you can join us for $25. All of the monies goes towards all of these beautiful things that we that we have for the children here. So the stands, if they break an instrument, because you know sometimes they break things, um, if they go on a trip or anything like that, if they need new uniforms. So every dollar counts. We need for you guys to get excited about giving back, okay? So one more time for winter break on the count of three. One, two, three. Winter break! Enjoy, guys. And we just heard from Miss Kittle share a message from FMPA, that's Finneytown Music Parents Association. And we'll speak more about that during intermission. Here are our seventh grade students. Thank you. 
right, this is our seventh grade band. And if you were here last spring, you could tell just how much they have grown this year. They're doing a really great job in class. They're always engaged. They're excited for band. And we're really proud of them and how far they've grown. And we're excited to see where they go. So we're going to do one more song. This is a total jam. One of my all-time favorites, Santa's Rockin' Holiday Mix. I think Mr. Frank was right. That is a jam. Santa's Rockin' Holiday Mix. Mike, what struck you from that performance? Well, their dynamic contrast for that grade minute level minute. was spectacular. They're taking the music and keeping it soft, and then they're gradually increasing that volume to a peak, and then they're able to bring it back down. Usually, a sign of a good musician is one who can play with a lot of dynamic contrast. Hello? And you can hear you them can developing those skills and now. From the media center which now, which is to the left, is, um, and then um, seventh grade can be picked up in the orchestra so room really, on the really secondary uh, campus. Excited to see what these guys are going to do next year and at the next concert, I guess I should say. But man, they've grown a lot, and um, great performance from that group. Yeah, even as me, someone who is, is wasn't a musician, isn't a musician, uh, I can see the difference. And and what you're explaining helps me understand all the growth that happens for our kids over the course of three years. And so we do have the uh, eighth grade coming up and our high school students, but we're gonna take another quick break here for a video um, that is a hype video for Finneytown. We hope you enjoy. We'll be right back. the designers of Finneytown's destiny. We write the story of life here at Finneytown. No one else can be the author of this story except for the people between these walls.
what story do we want to tell? What are we willing to do that we have never done before? What are we willing to say that we have never said before? Are we willing to lean in? Are we willing to overcome our fears? Are we willing to believe in the possibilities of our surroundings? We can't go at this alone. We need each other. Here at Finneytown, we can build potential by effort and the choice to commit. Commitment to be successful. Commitment to overcome our fears. Commitment to believe. Commitment to work together. Commitment to be the best version of ourselves. Are we? We are Finneytown! We are Finneytown! We are Finneytown! Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Mike, a good first half of this concert, wouldn't you say? Unbelievable half of the first. I mean, come on. It can't get any better than this. These kids have worked hard. And now we've got this intermission, and I don't know. I can't wait to hear the eighth grade band and high school group. Absolutely. And a minute, uh, a minute ago, we heard from Miss Kittles talking about FMPA. Before we talk about that, we're getting a look right now backstage, uh, actually over in the band room of the high school. Uh, talk a little bit, Mike, about what, what our kids are doing right now. Well, they're tuning their instruments, so they're either making their instruments shorter or longer to get into perfect pitch with each other, and that helps with that balance and blend I was talking about with seventh grade. One of seventh grade's key elements was that they were in tune with each other for the most part and that was something i noticed these guys right now are getting their instruments out they're getting them ready they're getting ready to tune they're making sound through them remember it's cold outside and that affects the pitch of the instrument and so they've got to get some warm air going through those instruments so right now they're doing that they're getting ready for warm-up uh, i think we're seeing some high school students in there right now um, and they're preparing themselves so it'll be an exciting performance for them you know what i what i see right now is it's a variety of things. I see some kids with high energy. Some some students are seem what seem somewhat focused, uh, quieter, and it really does look like uh, there's just different ways that people prepare. But when they come out on stage, they're all together and, and performing well together. And so that's neat that we get to see behind the scenes. Well, let's talk back. Uh, take it back to FMPA. Um, we heard from Miss Kittle. She talked a little bit about all the different fundraisers that the Finneytown Music Parents Association puts together to support this band students. I, I know they pay for things like uniforms or at least contribute, and probably a variety of other things. Can you talk a little bit about, from your experience, FMPA and their role in the success of the band program? Well, there's a lot of intangibles. We, we do tend to really appreciate, and I, I don't say this uh, to downplay it, but we do appreciate the money that's donated to the band program. Without that, you, you can't do some of the things that they do. But there's a lot of intangibles they donate to, which is time. Mm -hmm. Time is a huge, valuable asset that these parents give up willingly, whether it's coming to an FMPA meeting once a month, whether it's selling the cookie dough, with their kids at their uh, family events or door to door. Or the other thing too, is the fact that all the hours it takes before and after a concert, they'll help clean up the things, they'll help set up the things. And that time is probably the biggest asset that anyone can give. You don't have to have the money to support. It's time and energy. And man, did you see the energy from Miss Kittles? I mean, I wanted to be happy just listening to her talk, and you can see how much she loves the kids, and that's a big part of it. That's an intangible. Oh, you could sense that from her right away and the way that she got everybody excited by asking them to chant winter break. It sure sounds like people <laughs> are excited for, for a break yeah. from school. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice for all of us to recharge and spend time with family uh, during this break. But let's talk a little bit about 
the process of learning an instrument. As someone who's never played an instrument, it's difficult for me to fully comprehend how challenging it is, how much time and dedication it takes to advance over time. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that? Because I know you're a musician, play multiple instruments. Yeah, I think one of the things about music is you can't rush it. Right? You can't just pick up an instrument and play like Mozart. That's not possible. It takes very intentional focus and consistent practice. And I got to tell you, that skill of being able to look at the music and track it as it goes by you helps with a lot of literacy skills. It helps a lot with focus in class to learn something, that discipline to sit down there and really practice one or two measures over and over again. You could play one or two measures 50 times until you get it right. That kind of dedication, that kind of aptitude for learning is huge as they progress through their life as a musician and whatever job they have. Oh, no doubt. And, um, and it certainly pays off, like you said, the, the practice in music, in other areas such as the classroom, teamwork even, a, a lot of intangibles that come with playing an instrument. I want to go back to... Uh, the parent support you talked about for a minute. One thing that struck me as I watched um, Mid-States with you was the amount of hands-on activity from the parents to make the performance possible. Like I had no idea how much moving during, before, after a uh, competition that the parents are part of, especially with the win. So can you talk a little bit about... How, yeah, how that factors into your yeah, success. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what he's talking about is mid-states finals. It's the Midwest bands, so Kentucky bands, Indiana bands, and Ohio bands. The finals is the culminating event. It's the biggest thing there. Well, the night that we went, I should say the afternoon we went, it was crazy wind. I mean, I was having trouble keeping myself together, and the band has props. This year they use trees. And there was countless parents wheeling these props around, placing them on the field, and standing there behind them perfectly still so that they weren't noticed during the performance. Those 45 mile an hour winds are Yes, I mean, it's crazy, right? But yeah. that's the dedication. I mean, that's the passion for their kids and for our community. Um, that doesn't happen without those intangibles you're talking about. You talked about teamwork, that are, they're a part of the band. You know, they may not be playing an instrument, but they are a part of the band. And, uh, you know, I was just in awe. I mean, obviously, I've witnessed from years of experience as a band director that happened. But I think when you step out of it, when you're in our role and we're, we're kind of bystanders and we're audience members, you do notice, wow, look at the dedication and the commitment and the passion for our students. And, yeah, I mean, that's what FMP is about. And the, the sense of pride that everyone had after they performed on that field, it was. It was parents, guardians, students, um, our staff, just feeling like they had accomplished something so great, which they had, but together, and it truly took a team effort to pull that off. And I want, I want to say this, too. I think that the band is, is special. I see that all over our school community. Absolutely. All over our school community, our teachers, um, our students. I see it in the classrooms. I see it outside the classrooms. Uh, just that passion, it's, it's contagious, it's a part of us, and I love that about Finneytown. For sure. Okay, Mike, we're heading into the second half of the concert. We have the eighth graders performing. They'll give us a few songs, and then our high school symphonic band will play as well. What do you expect from these two groups? Well, a lot, a lot more difficult in the music realm, right? Um, eighth grades had more time to prepare their music, so they're probably going to sound a little bit more refined. But high school, they're amazing musicians. Um, but like we said, there's a challenge there, right? Mm -hmm. There's that two and a half week window they've had to grind it out. And let's not forget to mention that they start rehearsal at seven in the morning. Sometimes I forget my name at seven in the morning, right? <laughs> so they're grinding at seven in the morning, getting up early, driving in and when they're tired. And um, I mean, they're putting a lot of work in. So I know they're going to have a great performance, but they have a challenge in front of them, two and a half weeks. And I know if I had to be asked to do something in two and a half weeks, it's, it's a little bit nerve wracking. So I know that they've got that challenge, but they're going to overcome it. But I do expect there to be a more difficult level of music as you get through each grade level. You are able to play more notes, right? So instead of just playing the, the first five notes of the B-flat concert scale, you can play the B-flat concert scale, the A-flat concert scale, the chromatic scale, all these different scales and key signatures. 
and it just allows you to play more difficult music, not to mention the rhythm. There's a lot of different contrasting rhythms of eighth notes and sixteenth notes that you could play between the sections, and that interplay of rhythmic interest is really there when you play an eighth grade band and, and um, high school band. So you'll notice the eighth grade band will sound like a mini high school group, and that'll be really cool. I'm excited to see it. I'm sure our kids are getting ready, uh, maybe walking over right now from the band room to backstage. They could be behind uh, the curtain right now as well, lining up. We're, we're unsure. Mike, I have a few questions. So as someone who's not very familiar with band, um, I noticed that it seems certain movements by the director trigger movements from the performers. Can you take us into some of the nuances there, such as stepping onto that platform? What happens? What are the small details for someone like me to notice? So the word conductor means to coordinate, okay. right? So Sam Franck and Brad Delaney, their job is to coordinate the ensemble. So when they make their movements, they conduct, the kids are feeling the beat with each other. Okay. And when they point to them, that's their section to come in. So the band director knows and they know that they're working together as a team. So if one section is going too fast, the conductor may give them some eye contact and say, okay, here's the beat, keep it on, right? Let's say that he wants the trumpets to be a little bit louder, which I don't know why you'd want trumpets to be loud because they're always loud, right? <laughs> But let's say the trumpets, he wanted to be louder. He might pull them up, right, with this hand signal and be able to say, here, bring your crescendo up just a little bit. Bring your balance up so the rest of the ensemble sounds good, right? The other part of it, too, is the fact that the percussion section, I mean, they're way back there. So I think right. you can reach towards them and show them different signals. So your job is to coordinate, conduct the ensemble, and communicate visually because you can't yell, hey, uh, clarinets, can you please get on the beat? Because the audience hears that. But you can tell them that with your hands, which is kind of unique and cool, but they've been used to doing that. Wow, that's, that's see, something I didn't know. Fascinating to hear. So, so that you're communicating in real time as we're playing instruments. Absolutely. And so this right here is not something pre-planned. That's in response to what the conductor is hearing. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a conversation. Okay. Right? So you are telling the story together. And the cool thing about live performance is every live performance is different. So that story's different, right? If they walk in this building tomorrow and they play this piece, which they're going to be on winter break, so don't worry, they're going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> but if they were to walk in and play that piece tomorrow, it'd be a different story. It'd be a different conversation, right? Because the balance blends different. Your human interactions, your emotions are different. And so... That's the amazing part of this is that they are telling a story together by communicating visually, orally listening to the ensemble, visually looking at the conductor. Yeah, it's happening in real time. It's pretty cool. That is fascinating. I'll be paying attention to that as we listen to our eighth graders perform here and then our high school symphonic band. I'll be paying attention to Brad Delaney and Sam Franck as they make those gestures to the performers. And we're going to go ahead now... Here they come. Our eighth grade students are taking their seats. So what instruments do we have here sitting in the front row? So we have the flutes in the, in the first row, and then the clarinets are in the second row. As you can see, saxophones are right behind them. And then you got your horn and baritones and low brass coming there. You see Mr. Franks playing an instrument there. He's helping, there he is. helping the ensemble, which is amazing. It's a team effort, right? And you got percussion in the back, of course. They're ready to go. Um, but, yeah, they're arranged, like we said, from high-sounding instruments to low-sounding instruments from front to back. Well, as the kids settle in, we're going to see Mr. Delaney come back up to. Now, what do you call that platform he stands on? The podium. He's, He's about ready to, to take podium. that podium. And we'll go ahead and turn it over to Brad Delaney and our eighth grade band students.
All right, this group is our eighth grade band. Uh, these guys have done a fantastic job this year. Um, that one was a hard one for us to put together because they're eighth graders and they don't like to do things slow. So we, we had to spend a lot of time on that one. Uh, and I'm really proud of the, the work that they've accomplished there through that. Um, this year we had students uh, participate in an audition process for the District 14 Ohio Music Education Association uh, Honor Band. So District 14 is Hamilton County and a couple of other surrounding counties. Um, and they take the top middle school students uh, through audition uh, in this uh, honor band. And we had four students from our eighth grade band uh, make it this year. So uh, those students, and stand up when I call your name, uh, chorus that on flute. <laughs> Jayla Kittles on saxophone. Azela Ballou on the baritone. And Chad Parker on the baritone. So these students in January are gonna go and uh, it's like a weekend binge on band. Uh, and they, they learn some pieces and they perform. Uh, we'll send out that information. It'd be great to go and support them uh, if you can. Uh, our last piece for eighth grade is Jingle Bell Rock. Hope you enjoy. performance by those kids there with Jingle Bell Rock. Yeah, That's especially the chromaticism, like using 12 notes in a row to play some of those runs that they had. Very impressive. Very impressive. And I think our crowd's impressed, too, as mm -hmm. they shout out their approval of Jingle Bell Rock. They yeah. did a great job. Well, that wraps up our eighth grade. We're on to the high school symphonic band here in just moments. In the meantime, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll be back to introduce them as they take the stage. Town is important to me because I moved here in third grade. I met my first friend here, Adam Mediono, and I've just been making friends here. I really like this school because it gave me a lot of opportunities, and I'm in a leadership program, which is fun, and that is why I choose Finneytown. Finneytown is important to me because of the great community that we have here. Um, our art department here is really excellent in finding opportunities for me and other people interested in the art. I if I didn't take art class here, I would not be as successful or, or determined as I am now. Uh, my friends are great. I got a lot of family here. And everyone just knows each other, says hi to each other all the time. It's always positive here. And that's why I choose Finneytown. 
Fanny Town can do anything. Yes. Like, That's right. Like, Facts. if I love even that. if it's hard, it, it's still, it's, it's not impossible, the word itself. Welcome so. back, everyone. Okay, Mike, this is it. High School Symphonic Band. What should we look to see? This is the pinnacle of the night, right? This is it. The best musicianship on the stage. I mean, these guys are talented. I mean, coming in fifth overall in the whole state of Ohio and I guess the United States, right? That's huge. And so we're going to get to see them perform live here tonight with just two weeks to prepare, a little over two weeks. And I got to tell you, I think they're going to rock it. It's going to be a good performance. And that's, that's what I would like everyone to keep in mind is that as we're listening to these songs, two weeks, two, two and a half weeks to prepare to perform together these songs in front of a live audience is pretty impressive. And I look forward to, hear, to hearing how they sound, especially with Sleigh Ride. Yeah, and you're going to hear a lot of mat more maturity in the sound, right? They can play those chromatic scales. They can play in different key signatures. They can play their softs extremely soft, and they can play their louds extremely loud, and everything in between is balance. So I think the balance and blend you're going to notice, you're going to notice a lot more rhythmic intricacies where the rhythm changes between sections, a lot more independence between sections. And that conductor, we talked about the conductor, right? You'll mm -hmm. see the conductor actually moving his hands more in space to shape how the music really sounds. Where usually with fifth graders, sixth graders, seventh grade, eighth grade, you're kind of playing it safe as a conductor. Where now he can push the tempos a little faster when he wants it a little faster, and he can pull them back a little bit, and the ensemble's able to be mature enough to go with that. So uh, you'll see some of those things happen in real time, and, and I'm excited for the kids to perform this. I'm excited to hear it. And as you can see, the band, the stage is a lot fuller, more performers. And here is Mr. Brad Delaney leading our high school symphonic band.
This is our high school band. Uh, these students wake up, it used to be bright and early, now it's just early, uh, in the mornings, and they work hard every single day before school starting at 7 a.m. Some of them like to try to start at like 7.07 .07 or 7.10. We're working on that, uh, but 7 a.m. And these students have had an absolutely remarkable year. Um, we, we, for our marching band show this year, we um, set several school records. Again, this year we set our highest 
uh, record uh, at a Mid-States show um, so far. Yeah. These students placed in the top three uh, in class 4A for the second year in a row, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, it's not easy to do. Uh, and then we ventured out into Bands of America this year, uh, competed on a national level, and we are, uh, we placed fifth uh, in the nation uh, in bands for schools our size. So that is absolutely huge for these guys. So I'm really proud of them. And then putting this concert together uh, in about four and a half, five weeks uh, wasn't easy. Uh, we were only gonna do two pieces and then they twisted my arm into doing Sleigh Ride. So we decided about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, that we're doing Sleigh Ride. So um, we've got Sleigh Ride for you, but before we play that, um, a couple of things. We had some soloists in the, in the first few pieces. Xavier Sheets played uh, trumpet solo in Winter's Dawn. Yep. And then we had uh, Dylan Heath on baritone in All Is Calm. Yep. And Marquia Walker on flute for All Is Calm. Stand up, wave to the people. Give him a little wave. And Taylor Bush uh, on clarinet and all his comes. So just like eighth grade, we had some high school students audition for uh, District 14 Honor Band. It's a lot harder for the high school kids because those auditions are happening right at the end of our marching band season. Um, and you all know how hectic that can be. Uh, but we did have a student audition and make it uh, this year for the District 14 Honor Band. And that is Artem Bovchenko on the horn. So Artem is going to be representing uh, Finneytown at District 14 Honor Band. We're super proud of him uh, and all that he's accomplished. I um, want to say thank you to our administrators, uh, Carol Miller and Lisa Samuel and Anton Walker and Tammy Dietz, the uh, restorative practice person, Mr. Warmack, the athletic director, uh, the district office, uh, Dr. Laurie Banks and Jen Dynan and Eric Muchmore and all of them over there uh, for all of their support. The Board of Education for letting us go to Indy, uh, approving that trip, and uh, FMPA for helping pay for it. Um, you guys, the support that you provide allows these students to have some pretty awesome experiences, and uh, we're really thankful for that. So uh, here's Slay Ride. Enjoy.
Thank you all again for coming out. You guys did such a great job. How about you take like a week and a half off, huh? Have a nice, safe break. We'll see y'all back here in January. Well, a well-deserved standing ovation for our high school symphonic band. Mike, I love our students. I they do, too. Did, I mean, they did so well. They did, and they brought a smile to everybody's face. That standing ovation that the crowd gave them, I mean, well-deserved. These kids work hard, and the energy they bring, seeing that slapstick in the back where he's jumping in the air, that's great. I mean, that's what band's about. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, music doesn't have to be perfect for us to play it. And that's what we need to remember. The experience we had together, I know I had a short amount of time for that. But, man, they did a great job in such a short turnaround. Really proud of those kids. I know that directors are. I know the parents are. But that's what Finney Town's about right there. And you can feel the energy that the kids produce for the audience as they leave right now. You hear so much laughter. see people hugging. Um, just a great night here in the Performing Arts Center at Finney Town's secondary campus. And I, I have to say, Mike, Finneytown's unique, our band's unique, and it's really special when it all comes together in a night like tonight. Yeah, it really is, and I think we need to remember that there's more to this, right? There's students that come, there's alumni that come through, and, and band and music and sports, it really only lasts for a short amount of time, and these kids really do a lot for us in our community, and, and we're just appreciative of that, and Finneytown's a special place. You said it's unique. What's unique about it? I'll tell you what's unique about it. We spend a lot of intentional time sharing our gifts and celebrating our gifts together. And what a better way to have that community. There is no better way to have a community than sharing our gifts. And I appreciate the gifts the kids gave us tonight. And speaking of gifts, we had a lot shared with us tonight on our production crew. We had Mike Rosa as our lead producer uh, downstairs by the soundboard working the switcher. He was the one doing the transitions, throwing the graphics up that you all were seeing at home. We also have Joe Vlakis. He was working the sound and mixing it well together for us. And we also had Morgan Castleman, a student here, join us as a camera person. And when you saw those close-up shots and faraway shots, that was Morgan doing her work and even being remote um, back behind the stage and over in the band room. Yeah, she, she did a lot for us. We really appreciate Morgan jumping in here. She jumped in just today, so we're really appreciative of her. For sure. We also want to thank Brad Delaney, the band director, and our assistant band director, Sam Frank, for their work and dedication with our students. They obviously do an amazing job. All of the members of FMPA and any parent or guardian out there who supports our students here in their pursuits of whether that be music or athletics or academics, yes. all that support is much appreciated. And what we do here in the school couldn't be done without your support as well. And finally, and, and probably most importantly, uh, I want to thank our students for continuing to show up each day and working hard, taking risks, and putting forth their best effort, and, and working as a team. And we saw tonight that when our kids do that, anything's possible. And um, they put on a great show for us tonight. Final thoughts, Mike? Well, I feel fortunate to be a part of this. I know that this was fun for us. Um, and there's more to come. Tune in. This live stream thing is kind of new for us here, but there's more exciting things to come for this. And so tune in, check it out. We appreciate those of you who listen to our kids that weren't able to come. And this will be archived where we can go back and listen to it, you know, a couple months from now and still bring a smile to your face. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mike, for staying alongside of me and doing this. Uh, we certainly enjoyed it. We want to wish everyone a peaceful and happy break. Take care of yourself and take care of others. Thank you, Finneytown, for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.